Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this session, we'll start working with the shape tool in Corel Draw, we can see the properties bar here. The shape tool is used to make adjustments or to adjust vector shapes, the lines and nodes of curved vector objects, and to make adjustments to text objects in Corel Draw. It's one of the most important tools in Corel Draw, and we're going to cover it in pretty good detail, but I'm not going to go really in depth with it. The shape tool is in the toolbox over here beneath the pick tool. You can select that and you will have the shape tool. Now the property bar will not change until you select an object. If I select this line with an arrow end on it, now the property bar will change to the shape tool. I don't really have anything selected in this line segment, so there's not much I can do up there. Let's scroll down and take a look at some of the functionality of the shape tool. I'm going to select this curve and kind of like in the preceding session, the anatomy of vector, we can make adjustments to our line segments and curves. With the shape tool, if I double click, I'll add a node. If I double click, I'll delete a node in the line segment. So double click and add a node. Now up here in the property bar, I can change the property or the mode of the node. But I can also do that with my keyboard. I could hit the C key and that will change to a cusp. And you saw that change in the property bar. I can hit the S key and that will change to a smooth. If I hit the S key again, it will change to symmetrical. If I go back to C, it will go back to a curve. I can also select a line segment that's in the curved state and change that to or convert to line. But with that selected, if I hit the L key, it will convert to a line. So there's hotkeys for the shape tool. And we'll get to those in the next session. I'll hit Control Z and go back. So these are curves and we can left click a node and change this ellipse or circle shape like that and then we could pull these control arms back with the handles and make adjustments to vector curves while we're working on illustrations or tracing and the same thing here if i wanted to make this look like a tear shape i could bring this out here this way hit the c key change that to a cusp take the control handle from the control arm, pull it in that way, pull that in this way. This I might want to double click and delete. Now I've got a tear shape there inside of that circle. So that's just the fundamentals of how we work with the shape tool on curves. Now these are vector shapes. And this is a rectangle and it has rounded corners. The nodes here with the shape tool, I can left click, hold down, take that back to a full rectangle or adjust the rounded corners even more. As you can see there. Now here is an ellipse set up as a pie. Left click, select the node. I can bring that back to a full ellipse. Now it's in the arc mode. I want to bring that right to there. Now it's back to a normal ellipse or circle. But if I left click and hold down and drag that out, now I'm in the arc state. Left click, bring that around. And I'm still in the arc shape. When I see those lines appear, I'm in the pi state. And I can go back to the ellipse state. 
This is a polygon with 17 nodes. I can edit the polygon shape very differently than working with a curve. Left click, hold down and pull on the nodes. The shape tool also has a right click contextual menu when you're hovering over a line or a node. If you right click, you'll see many of the options that are in the properties bar. Sort of like a shortcut without having to go up there into the property bar. I could change this line to a curve. Now I'm going to get into training on the shape objects later. I just want to cover this relating to what we can do with the shape tool. I'll scroll down here. We have some text. I can select that. Now here I get character nodes. I can left click, hold down and move characters with their character nodes from the shape tool. I'll hit control Z. I also have a kerning or the ability to left click, hold down and increase the space between the characters in my text. There's also a line spacing handle here from the shape tool. Left click, hold down, and I can adjust the line spacing between those two lines of artistic text. It's the same with the paragraph text. And even with the paragraph text, I can select a character node, left click that, holding down the left mouse button, and that will move the character. I'll hit Control Z. I can also adjust the kerning or the spacing between characters. Left click, hold down. Pull that to the right, pull it in to the left. I can also adjust the line spacing. Left click, hold, pull down, or push up from the paragraph text. Now, the shape tool, these are the fundamentals of working with the vector objects that you work with very frequently in CorelDRAW. It also works with things like the perspective tool, the envelope tool, and other tools in CorelDRAW that we'll cover in future sessions. Now to work effectively with the shape tool in my opinion you'll want to have once again enable node tracking enabled which we demonstrated in previous videos and we'll wrap here for an overview of the shape tool and we'll get into some more things with the shape tool in the next session.